Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, we're going to be talking about some L-head engines today. Uh, there seems to be a trend lately with machine shops that are only doing machine work. They will not assemble an engine. Now, I've never heard of that. Uh, you know, Maybe it's a new thing. Maybe guys are having too much trouble with customers. Uh, I know that for sure. But um, I have an engine for Ron from down South Carolina. And that guy did the machine work and I have an engine from Kyle and he's from Texas and that guy did the machine work and I have a machine block ground cranks uh, I got a bunch of parts for Ron's engine and I've got to supply some parts for Kyle's engine uh, pistons valves things like that uh, Now I'm gonna take you to each engine and I'm gonna show you some things that I'm not super comfortable with I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but um, uh, I, I believe Kyle's engine came from a performance shop. We're going to take a look at that crank, and I'll show you why I think that. Ron's engine, it's an M38 engine. Uh, I don't know. The engine, the block seems to have been in bad shape. There's some crack repair. Uh, there's 15 uh, time certs in the head for new threads. And uh, there's some sleeve work that I'm not real happy with. But um, I'm going to take you over and show you uh, what I got going on. And, uh, and show you guys. Uh, you got to be careful out there. Uh, be very careful with your engine shop that you use. Uh, now nobody's perfect. Uh, but, um, you know, things happen. And, um, but but you got to be conscious of what's going on. And be very careful how you pick your engine shop. So uh, we're going to take a look at Ron's engine first, and I'll show you what I found there. Okay, guys, we're looking at Ron's engine from the bottom. Now, I got some paperwork with his engine. It said there was one sleeve put in. There's one sleeve. There's two sleeves. There's three sleeves and four sleeves. So there's four sleeves in this engine. Paperwork said one. Now, on the number one sleeve... I'm going to try and get you in there. Don't know if we're going to get in there. Okay. You see that line in there? Um, yeah, this is tricky to get in. I'm so focused in. You see this? Let me get my finger in there. See that line right there? Okay. I'm going to come back out here. I think you can see that line. Now, let me go in there. You hear that sound? That's my fingernail catching on that sleeve. Now it's actually not one sleeve, but there's a sleeve and then there's a tiny part of a sleeve put down under the first sleeve. Uh, it just measures maybe, maybe two inches on that sleeve. Right there, you can see that line. Okay, see how tiny that piece of sleeve is? I do have reservations about that. I don't feel good about that. Uh, I'm going to flip the engine. We'll take a look and see what happened. Okay, here we are flipped over. You can see that sleeve. It's almost invisible. Same thing on that one. Same thing on that one. We get to number one. And I'm hoping you can catch the shadow right. See this sleeve comes way out here. This is what's called a flanged sleeve. Okay, now... As far as I know, I looked up um, Melling and LA Sleeve and everybody. Uh, you can't get a full depth flange sleeve for the uh, for the eight and a half inch sleeve. Okay, so that one went in. I don't know if it was to fix some cracks. I don't know why a flange sleeve was used here, but it went down. Uh, I think six and a quarter inches, and then we had two and a quarter. Nope, two inches, sorry, for the little piece that was put in. Um, that little piece, it's not like a whole sleeve grabbing on to the block and, and having all that, uh, that friction there, you know, it won't move. Um, but we got a little piece in there, it's two inches long. Um, Ron, I'm not feeling great about that. Uh, if you want me to assemble the engine as is, I will do that. Um, but I can't really guarantee if that sleeve's going to stay in there or not. 
Okay, you can see this engine's had a lot of crack repair right there, right there. Um, so the, the the machine work otherwise, you know, the bores are nice and straight. Everything is good. I don't feel good about that that little tiny sleeve. So that's what's going on with this one. Uh, if it were me, I would have probably put a standard sleeve in here. If there was any cracks around here, I would have fixed the cracks. I'm not sure why this flange. I mean, you can see how big that flange is. I'm not sure why this flange sleeve is in there. So. Um, you know, let me know. Let me know how you feel, Ron. I, I, I can't. You know, I, you know, you're doing, you know, 3,000, 3,200 RPM, 3,400 RPM. I, I hope that bottom, that little piece of sleeve is going to stay in there. Uh, I don't want to be responsible if it doesn't stay in there. So, a little bit of a dilemma there. Uh, I know this is an M38 block, and you probably don't have another one laying around, but. Uh, if you feel okay about that and you talk to your machinist and he says absolutely it's going to stay in there, I will assemble this block. Uh, if you have any reservations, um, you know, don't ask me to assemble a block like that. So I, I'm concerned about that. So um, get back to me, Ron. Let me know what you uh, let me know what you think about that. Okay, we're looking at Kyle's engine right now. Now you can tell right away just by looking in this side cover all your guides are not even okay the exhaust was put into the right depth the intake is is up too high now it's not super high but it's high enough where yeah it's hard to see in there it's high enough when your valves too high and you start building carbon uh, it's going to build around the guide then it's going to get on the, the valve and it's going to you're going to have a build up of carbon in there uh, there's a reason why there's dimensions for putting your your valve guides into a certain depth. There's a reason for that, uh, for valve support, and so you're not going to get this hole completely carboned up. Um, we missed on that one, so that's not real good. Uh, let's come over here. Here's another L head I'm building for a local customer, and do you see? That's what your guides are supposed to look like. They're all supposed to be perfectly even right there. Uh, these two different depths they get set in, and I don't know why machine shops miss that, but uh, we're going to have to uh, adjust Kyle's uh, guides and get them pressed to the right depth. So it's kind of tricky. When guys are, are saying, oh, I'm only doing the machine work, I'm not assembling it. Well, then the guy assembling it thinks he's going to put it together which is me and we got to go back and, and adjust things so let me show you what else we got going on with Kyle's engine okay here we are looking at the valves it appears that the seats have been cut and that's an intake valve goes in fine that one goes in fine the exhaust are okay what happened there? That's going to get stuck in there. Why Why are these two not... I can force that in, but that's not going to... I can't run it. There's no, there's no running clearance. So what happened there, Kyle? Why, why would they ream two of them and leave two of them? So I'm going to have to go through, I'm going to check out all this, uh, this valve work here. We're going to have to press the guides to the proper depth. I'm going to look at, this is just a straight 45 cut here. It's not a three angle valve job. It's not what I would normally do. Again, machine shops, they, they, they're charging, they're getting away with this, and then they're saying, well, I did the machine work, uh, you know, I'm out of the picture. This is nonsense. This is absolute nonsense. So... Don't worry, Kyle. I'm gonna get this straightened out. It, 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 it's gonna be a good engine. Don't worry about that. I'm not gonna let any anything, you know, go to hell on it. But you already paid for this. Now you're gonna be paying for it again. Uh, it's not. I don't know what's happening. It's like an epidemic out there. Machine shops just want to quick slam bang stuff out there and then put it on the guy assembling it, and and that's just crazy to me. Well, we're gonna look at some crankshafts next, and, and I'm gonna show you. Um, even though you could turn a crank, I'm going to show you a few things about it that I don't like. 
So make a setup for that. Okay, guys, we're looking at some crankshafts here. I know it's going to be hard for you to see. Um, the camera isn't isn't doing it justice. Now this Kyle's crank, it is so finely polished. Um, you could actually take crankshaft too far. Uh, you polish it too much. Uh, it's the highs and lows when you look under a, a crankshaft with a microscope. It's the highs and lows of the metal that hold on to the oil. Now. There is a six cylinder, another 258 I'm doing, and you could kind of see it's not the same sheen as that crank. These are, these are, we're splitting hairs here, but sometimes this is, this is what matters. Um, so Kyle's crank, I believe, was done at a shop that does performance engines uh, nothing wrong uh, you know with the crank I didn't measure it yet but uh, it, it does look like a nice job this particular one maybe if we hold it like this you can see the difference between the shine here and the shine here this one was done by um, I had to buy this I didn't have a crank so this came from um, crankshaft supply uh, it's a company that just does crankshafts that's all they do now that's the finish they leave. Okay, and I'm going to go and show you a finish on the 360 crank that I did. So, super polished, correctly polished. This is going to hold less oil than this. I know, I mean, you have to really get into oil videos and, and, and get into some, some good guys are saying uh, about oil, um, about the roughness average, and they call it RA. You could get a little profilometer and, and run it across there this is silky 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 smooth won't hold oil like that guy okay we're under some different lighting here but this is the 360 crank now I polished that final finish on that is with the cork sanding belt now it's just it's a little bit different finish. I know the camera can't pick it up right, but if you were looking at it, there you can see that a little better. It's not super polished, um, that cork belt. And so, and the Scotch Bright as well leaves the perfect finish. And it's going to leave this where oil is going to cling to it better than a absolute perfect, perfect, um, you know, 2000 grit finish or whatever that is on there. Um, so these are things you get into when people say, hey, I had all the machine work done. Will you assemble my engine? Well, you kind of see what I'm running into. Uh, I, I don't really know why guys aren't assembling engines. If you're confident in your machine work, why wouldn't you assemble it? So it's tricky out there, but um, that's where we're at. So uh, a few more things to show you about some L heads. Okay guys, I've done way too many videos about uh, valve seat cutting. Uh, if you want to see some valve seat cutting, i got plenty of videos out there. This is a three angle valve job. you got a 60, you got a 46, and um, it, on the top one it depends. I'll put a maybe a 31, maybe a 15, whatever, whatever I think it's going to take to get everything flowing nice. Three angle valve job takes a hair longer than your straight 45 that most shops are putting in there it takes a little bit longer but you this is the type of stuff that you can feel in the seat of your pants and when somebody gets in your Jeep and says wow that thing goes like crazy um, a lot of it is thanks to the valve work so like I say with Kyle's over here uh, same thing with Ron's they do have a 45 degree wipe on there uh, on Ron's I vacuum the valves down they do hold vacuum uh, I have not gotten all the valves and Kyle's yet because because the guides are at the wrong uh, height and they're you know they're not re all of them aren't reamed yet. But um, everybody looks at this engine and says, "Oh God, it's just a little four-cylinder Jeep engine. It's simple." Well, if they were so simple, uh, shops would be getting it right. So, Ron, Kyle, don't worry about a thing. I'll get you squared away. Uh, if you can, Ron, uh, let me know how you feel about that tiny little piece of sleeve in your engine. 
I'm not uh, I'm not going to go forward unless you give me the okay on that. And uh, I'll show you what else I have done for you, Ron. Okay, Ron. Transmission transfer case are all assembled. Transmission needed quite a bit of stuff. Transfer case has the Timken bearing kit in it. Uh, I had to put new shoes on your uh, your emergency brake shoes. I turned the drum. Uh, new bearings and stuff. New gaskets. New seals and everything. Uh, everything is joined together. Uh, I've got to put some lube in it and stuff and just check it for leaks. I'm sure there won't be any, but I'm going to put some lube in it and check it. So that's finished, and I will get your engine finished um, yeah, pretty soon. But uh, get back with me if you can on that engine. Let me know how you feel. Okay, guys, figured we'd round out the video with some more pieces. These are the last two pieces I needed to make for the Jeep Scrambler. Uh, I just got to pop some holes. Got to pop some holes on this side for drainage. And that will take care of everything for the rear of the Scrambler. So, um, that's all I have for you today. Cold saw blade came in. And there it is. I got the coolant in there. Or cutting oil, whatever you want to call it. And uh, ready to start cutting with the cold saw shortly. So, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching everybody. I will catch you on the next video.